A year ago, as President Trump entered the White House, it seemed there was no stopping the global rise of autocratic populists. Around the world, political leaders were building support by demonizing minorities, attacking human rights principles, and undermining faith in democratic institutions. What's been remarkable in the last year is the enormous resistance to that agenda that has emerged. In various countries, political leaders, judges, journalists, activists, civic groups, and many members of the general public have all stood up to resist that populist agenda. Where that resistance has been strong, populist advances have been limited. But where the populist message of hate and intolerance has been met by capitulation or indifference, the populists have flourished. France was perhaps the most important turning point. Emmanuel Macron showed that it was possible to beat overwhelmingly the National Front, not by emulating its messages of hate, as many other European politicians had done, but by standing up vigorously for democratic principles. In the United States, President Trump did enormous damage, but the popular resistance was able to limit that damage, particularly in his efforts to prevent Muslims from entering the United States, to prevent Americans from securing their right to health care, and in trying to block transgender people from serving in the U.S. military. People took to the street in Poland, in Hungary, in Venezuela to oppose the autocratic agendas of their leaders. In Africa, an effort to orchestrate a mass exodus from the International Criminal Court was met by an overwhelming round of support from African groups who convinced African leaders to stand with this court so that only one country, Burundi, in the end, left it. All of this shows that this is a battle very worth waging. But when there was no opposition, when domestic opposition was suppressed, when the international community showed indifference, it's in those moments that anti-rights leaders prevailed. In Turkey, President Erdogan decimated democracy because European countries were more concerned with enlisting his support and stopping the flow of refugees. In Egypt, President Sisi crushed dissent because most Western governments bought into his argument that he was providing stability. In China, the government proceeded with the most intense crackdown and dissent in a generation because most governments were more concerned with securing Chinese contracts. Enormous catastrophes unfolded in Yemen with the Rohingya in Burma because most governments around the world didn't put the pressure needed to stop these atrocities. But all of this shows that there is a real struggle underway. There is a battle worth waging. What is needed now is engagement, not despair. A principled defense of human rights and democratic principles rather than capitulation to those who attack those principles.